Hi all, welcome to our next episode of Doorstep Science. This is episode two, parasitoid wasps, small stature, big dreams. Many crop pests thrive when the weather warms up, but crop pests aren't the only thing that thrive with the arrival of warm weather, so do beneficial species. These guys are part of your farm workforce and they'll give you that extra edge during springtime. So let's get into it. Today we're talking integrated pest management with a focus on biological control of crop pests, in particular on parasitoid wasps. In our last episode, we had a look at the different categories of natural enemies. So if you haven't watched that episode, get onto the Caesar Doorstep Science playlist on YouTube and have a look. Today I'm talking about parasitoid wasps because they fall into the specialist category. And there are another very important aspect of the beneficial complex out in food production systems. They can be wasps or they can also be flies, but here I'm just going to concentrate on the wasps. So here is a generic pest. It goes through its larval stage and metamorphizes into an adult. That's a normal life cycle. What parasitoids do is they actually short circuit that life cycle. And it can be at different stages, such as at the egg stage, juvenile stage, or the adult stage. For example, when a parasitoid wasp female finds a suitable host, she may insert her own egg into it. The small wasp larvae will then eat the egg from the inside out. In natural environments, you often won't notice them, but we do have these minute wasps absolutely everywhere. They are microscopic and they're often very, very cute, Often they will come in these weird and wonderful colours and shapes, but of course you would need a good hand lens, if not a microscope, to see these features. So you're really relying on detecting evidence of parasitism to confirm their presence in your crop. So these minute wasps will hunt around and they will try to detect a choice host. For instance, you'll get parasitoid wasps that will only hunt leaf miners. You see here an ectoparasitic wasp larvae that's hanging on to the back of a leaf miner larvae. Or they'll only hunt certain caterpillars, for instance. So they tend to be quite specialised. They're a transient type of beneficial, so it is amazing how quickly they can find a pest population to parasitise. This is a caterpillar that I collected from a catnip plant. It looked perfectly healthy when I found it, if a little bit sluggish and perhaps a bit overweight. The next day it looked like this. It had clearly been parasitized well before I'd collected the caterpillar. Over the next few days, those parasitoid wasp larvae developed into pupae. You can see one here. You can even see the developing eyes. And I soon had hundreds of parasitoid wasp adults that I released into my garden. Here is a picture of a parasitoid wasp overpositing eggs into another type of host, in this case an aphid. Parasitized aphids will live for a while and then die, and they turn into what we call aphid mummies. They often look gold or bronze in colour. Here's a video of a population of rose aphids on my rose bush. They're just starting to be impacted by the local wasps, and you can see a few mummies here and there. The number of these mummies will increase over the next few weeks, and if all goes well, the aphid population will crash. Parasitoid wasps can fly, and they tend to be quite transient, as I said. They'll leave a pest population when the food source dries up, and they'll go in search of more prey. Hunting tactics can vary, and they're not terribly well understood. There are some species of parasitoid wasp that will pinpoint maggots in horticultural fruits, by tapping on the fruit and using echolocation before it stabs its ovipositor into the fruit and lays eggs. And that's pretty smart. Release of exotic parasitoids to control invasive pests overseas is becoming more and more common. And on the home front, more and more growing operations, particularly in horticulture, are finding it economically viable to buy in natural enemies from specialised providers to release into the crop. Setting aside refugia for your natural enemies is really important to keeping their populations healthy. So in the next episode of Doorstep Science, we'll be taking a look at landscape design and why this is so important for that biological control component of integrated pest management. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Doorstep Science. It's our way of delivering good science straight to your door. 